Hello, welcome. One of the many odd jobs I've had to hold is a human scarecrow. So some of you may not even know what that is. Just scarecrow, add human to it. That was my job. So basically, in the very hot equatorial Uganda weather, I'd wake up every day in the morning, go into the giant fields of corn, stand in the middle, and my job is simple. Chase away all the chimpanzees, the birds, and the monkeys from destroying the garden. So fast forward, February 2016, I'm on Ted stage in Berkeley, California. <laughs> My name is Chris, and today I'm here to talk to you about this simple topic, purpose. Is this a 17-year-old in this room or watching this, or a 70-year-old in this room watching this? They're still pursuing or trying to see what they want to be when they grow up. So purpose is one of those things that's so scary, sometimes so hard to wrap our, hands, our heads around, but so important that we need to spend some time exploring what our purpose in this world is. So if you ask yourself, you wake up, eat, go to bed, go to work, is that it? Is that it to life? So the dictionary defines purpose as this. The aim or a goal of a person, what a person is trying to, to do or become. What does that even mean? I define purpose like this. A personal life mission. Something larger than yourself that you're working towards. And when you get to that point at the end of this thing called life, you look back and you said, I contributed to the world. So the next few minutes, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, and then we can come back to this thing called purpose. This man is my father. He passed on when he was 33 years old. Dreams cut short. My mother followed thereafter. There I am, a little boy, seven or eight, four younger siblings. I have to take care of them. So if you think about it, in this country, at that age, you barely can cross the street by yourself. It's survival for the fittest. This is true for so many kids around the world. We don't get to hear about them because they are not on a third stage. People and kids all over the world end up not surviving or surviving. The ones who survive, we hear about them. The ones who don't, we don't. It's just a statistic. I was one of those kids. It's in my house. That's where I grew up. Nine of us, chicken, goats, we're all sharing this space. No electricity, no running water, as you can imagine. Name any form of anything that's associated with extreme poverty, I've seen it. I've been there. If you think about homelessness, Poverty, disease, war, name it. I've been there. There's someone in this room today who's like, well, I can't relate. I never had that life. But I'm here to tell you one thing. What are you going to do with those blessings that you've been given in this life? Simply try to figure out how you make a world a better place. 
There's another person in this room who's going, so, going through so much pain, suffering, abuse, and they can relate to what I had to go through. I'm here to tell you, this too will come to pass. Hang in there, stay positive. My breakthrough came in when I was about 15 years old through this lady who set off a series of events that got me to be right here on this stage. She came to Uganda and started an orphanage, which I became part of. Her name is Carol Adams. She's one of the unsung heroes in this world. She has thousands of kids she has supported, including myself, to go to school in that part of the world and just learn to be, to be somebody, have something in your hands, a skill set to support your family. Through her, I met this family, Michael and Martha Helms. They are right there. I cannot express how much these people have changed my life. They brought me into this country and gave me hope. I started off at a community college, Laney, down in Oakland. Ended up at UC Berkeley, mechanical engineering. Go Bears! I graduated, and I was the student speaker at Greek theater, one of the best days of my life. And then I went on to do graduate school, same field. At this point, I can tell you, when an opportunity is handed to you, grab it and make the best out of it. I started my first company right after that. It's called Rides for Lives. And Rides for Lives basically is a company that creates vehicles that deliver health care in hard to reach areas. On demand health care, if you will. If you call a 911 here in Berkeley, some you know, truck will show up and some guys will pick you up and take you to the hospital. In most parts of the world, that's not available. This is a system I created. It's a big carriage that carries a full-size uh, human, carries up to 400 pounds, and it takes patients from the village to the hospital. We've delivered thousands of patients to, to get access to health care. And when we did that, I realized when they get to the hospital, most of the time they have a hard time seeing a doctor. And then I asked myself, what can I do with my engineering experience to build something that works for them? And I created this system a mobile hospital. We have a doctor, a lab, and a pharmacy all on board, going around villages and serving patients at their doorstep. Thousands of patients, from cancer to HIV, to everything you can think of. And my second innovation is called Prevail. I co-founded this company with my partner, Anwar, who is in the audience. And Prevail is an innovative technology to bring lab into your hands. So basically, lab on a chip. So something as simple as this. You can go and buy it from a store, like Target, and you bring it home, and you're able to access your healthcare information in the palm of your hands. And then you sync the data into the cloud, and you have access uh, to that information. My work has served me well, won numerous awards, as they've mentioned, been in major media papers, actually recently became a contributor, a contributor for uh, Forbes magazine and Huffington Post, actually wrote an article uh, published yesterday. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> on the cover of a magazine, and this guy. Met the President of the United States of America. <laughs> Talent is universal. It's evenly distributed by zip code or by country. It transcends geographic boundaries. Opportunities are not. 
So you ask yourself, how is all this relevant to me? I'm here to tell you, find your purpose, embed passion in that purpose, build your life around it, and then you never have to work a day, to work a day in your life. Here's my life purpose. To bring opportunity to talented people all around the world where no opportunity exists. Right now, I'm just an engineer building stuff. But all I'm doing is putting together resources, creating a network of these tools that will help me help those people who were in my position a few years ago. And some people may say, I'm just a student. I don't know what my passion is. Here are some pointers. Talent. If you're a basketball player, if you have that one thing you're so good at, cultivate it. And it will come in. We'll just drive in. Personal tragedies, that's where I found mine. Losing parents, losing numerous relatives due to tragedies that could be solved by just simple technology. That's how I found mine. Other experiences, including work and internships, travel. You get inspired when you do those things. Sometimes things that piss you off. <laughs> things that annoy you a lot. You could just create something to solve that problem. So it's important to be absolutely obsessed with what you do. And the only way this obsession is going to be fun is when you find meaning in it. Some people, too many people, work at jobs they hate and things they don't like doing simply because they just want to get by. Stop existing and start living. There are four pillars of happiness. And the number one is financial security. Being able to support yourself and your family without having to worry about it. And money has diminishing returns. It doesn't make you happy after a certain point. And the number that researchers have is between seventy-five dollars and $80,000. Once you have that, it doesn't make you any happier. There are so many billionaires out there so sad because they're still looking for their purpose. They thought that was everything, and it turns out it's not. The number two thing is great personal relationships. And that's something that suffers when we immerse ourselves in our work and we forget our family, friends, and spouses. And the third one is good health. Health, I mean both spiritual, if you're a believer and you believe in God. Health, I mean if you're a person who can go out, you know, go for a run and, you know, Meditate, take care of your health in the midst of all this uh, craziness that's going around. And then my personal favorite is purpose. Being able to know and have that thing that you're working on that's larger than yourself. That's how to be awesome and win at life. So I'll leave you with one thing. Go out, seek out your, pa your passion, your purpose, and then wrap your whole life around it. And then you never have to work a day in your life. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>